Hey guy, welcome back to the world's best and also worst website. Someone I've never really talked about but have always been a little embarrassed to share this platform with is JayStation, who many of you may know is a guy who exploits celebrity and YouTuber deaths for internet views. One of my favorite things about Mac Miller is he dated Ariana Grande. And hell yeah, I put ads on this shit. This is someone who also, just last month, pretended to buy human slaves off the dark web in a video that had the hashtag slave in the description. You know when you're just browsing the slave hashtag to find fun new content? But now, congratulations are in order because recently JayStation managed to set a new personal record for negative attention by faking his girlfriend's death. Let's smash the like button right now, guys. One like equals one prayer for Alexia. Dear God. Where did you go? And at first, he was getting away with it, because aside from the reputation he's earned from his entire body of work so far, no one had any reason to suspect that he was lying about this. And even if they did, there wasn't any proof. Until there was. The YouTuber Some Ordinary Gamers, feeling heartbroken for Jay, having gone through a similar situation in the past, wanted to be absolutely certain of the truth. So he did a little bit of investigative work. He looked up the site of the crash, nothing there. No news reports from the area, despite it supposedly taking place on a pretty major highway in Toronto. No mention of her death online by family members or seemingly anywhere other than in Jay's videos. He then took it a step further. He called the local police in the area of the crash and asked if there were any reports of a fatal car accident involving someone named Alexia. There were none. So either every member of the police force took a vacation at the same time, or she's not really dead. The truth starts to leak out. Uh-oh, Jay's in trouble. Not willing to accept defeat yet, he follows up the first video with an equally heart-wrenching drive to the site of the crash. Oh my god, she must have crashed into the sign. Can we just take a moment to acknowledge how absurd this is? They set up this fake memorial in the middle of the snow, then drove a couple miles away so they could pretend to be driving to it. I bought her these roses. And all of this for nothing, because the cracks are starting to show. The commenters have caught on, more videos are starting to come out about the situation. She's gone. She's gone. It's just too fake. It's too bad. Yeah. I was half expecting her to pop out of that fucking Egyptian sarcophagus behind him. But the real tragedy here, in my opinion, is that this premature revelation of the truth got in the way of Jay's initial master plan, which is so genius, I can't believe it didn't work. What if we fake your death, do a skit on YouTube, pranking everybody just to gain traction on the Dream Team channel? This gives you two free videos of pure sad with ad. Then we were gonna do a Ouija board video, which I did. My dead girlfriend, my dead girlfriend right now. And then finally, the grand finale. Bring her ass back to life. We were gonna call her at 3 a.m. And we were gonna resurrect her. And no one would suspect a thing. See what I'm talking about here? It's a foolproof plan. All they were gonna do is resurrect a human being for the first and only time ever, and no one was gonna have any follow-up questions. Not the police, not scientists. He's since tried to imply that if Alexia hadn't come clean about being alive, then everything would have turned out fine. She ruined my entire life, this girl. No, she isn't what ruined the plan. The plan is what ruined the plan, you idiot. It was her dream to get a million subscribers, so... <laughs> what?! Let's try to reverse engineer this idea for a second. Your goal is to get more followers on your second channel. So your brain tells you, hmm, one of us should die. I am in awe of the decisions that had to be made for Jay Station to get himself into this situation. To be trapped inside his mind is a prison sentence that I wouldn't wish upon even the worst criminal. And I know that this has been covered ruthlessly up until this point, but I do want to point out how pathetic and gross this is to try and manipulate your audience into thinking that someone is dead. Not just dead, but that they died from a drunk driver. Do a skit on YouTube. Pranking everybody. That's not just like a all oh, funny YouTube skit. That's so insensitive, dude. You are making light of a horrible tragedy just for your own personal gain. Go subscribe to that channel right now, guys. There's really not a word strong enough to describe how scummy that is. But the story continues. The truth. Alexia fires back. 
J Station retaliates. Oh my god, how long is this gonna go on? Finally, after several days of airing out their personal grievances with each other in a hilariously public setting, they seem to have moved on and they're both back to business as usual. And you know, if their plan was to bore people out of caring about the situation by posting these 25 minute he said, she said confessionals, well, by golly, I think it worked. Most people have lost interest. So what we're left with here is four videos of whining, crying, and pointing fingers at each other. You'd have to be insane to sit through all 97 minutes of this. So I did. Let me summarize it for you. Now, obviously, neither of them want to take the blame for this, and they're in an interesting situation where because there's two of them, they don't necessarily have to take accountability. They can just point fingers at each other and say, well, don't worry about what I did, guys, because the other person's worse. Let me tell you guys exactly what happened with all these my girlfriend's dead videos. You don't understand, like, how messed up my life used to be like his first video about the situation is essentially just a sob story in the middle of the fucking ghetto and shit he had the chance to come out and be mature about things and really own up to the situation and instead he's just crying in a closet because his girlfriend's gone and his childhood was bad i would get bullied in school and shit which by the way doesn't justify being a bad person plenty of people have had rough upbringings and aren't awful because of it you're trying to use it to remove blame as if ever Everything you've ever done is excusable because 12 years ago you got bullied. Ended up going to jail because of drinking. Like that's a really interesting way to word that. You didn't go to jail because of drinking. No one just has one beer and then gets arrested. What I assume he's saying is one time I did something illegal while drunk, but therefore it's not my fault, it's the alcohol's fault. See the pattern here of not taking responsibility for anything? He is adept at shifting blame, and you'll notice even more of that later on. But he does slip up at one point and basically admit to orchestrating the entire stunt himself. So we thought of the idea. Actually, I thought of the, about the idea. The whole thing was her idea, uh, which is to say that she was in the room when I told her about the idea. She ruined my entire life, this girl. I miss you so much. But now my entire life is ruined. I want you back. Oh man, he is really going through it right now. But hey, at least he's got his friend Ahmed. Forever, I'm grateful for Ahmed Mo. He helps me with everything. He is down for me. Which good generation? When I was a kid, I actually had a girlfriend and she passed away. Which good generation? Witches are ashes, super scary. When I was a kid, I had a grandma babysitter and guys, she used to whip me all the time. So I'm really scared to go see the grandma. He is a true guy. But enough funny business. Here is the line in this video that stands out to me the most. I expected all this to stay on YouTube. And it didn't. I expected all this to stay on YouTube. What? There is so much inside of that one sentence. What an insightful glimpse into the way this maniac thinks about YouTube. That all of this is just content. That it has no connection to the real world whatsoever. Ghost fart at 3 a.m. is just content. I'm with you on that one. Uh, proclaiming the death of a human being to millions of people? You didn't think that would seep into the real world at all? Like her family, who you didn't bother to notify beforehand? You didn't think they'd be concerned at all about their dead daughter? After the first video that we posted together when I said she died, it was all good. And then she got phone calls from her parents and her parents didn't like it. I just can't wrap my head around this situation here. This is someone who's so sucked into this content factory that he's created that he doesn't even recognize real life anymore. And I told her that her parents, it's none of her business what we do online. I don't mess with his dad's business. He, he shouldn't mess with ours. And it's because he's never received real consequences for his videos in the past, so he doesn't see it as something that affects real life. And never was a happy until now, until I met Alexia. To sum this video up, Jay thought that based on his past experiences, he could just come out all somber, play the victim card. Oh, I do bad things, but that's not my fault. And he'd be fine. But I don't think he expected Alexia to fire back as hard as she did. Jay told me that he does not want me to have Instagram. He does not want me to have Facebook. He deleted all my contacts in my phone. I felt really controlled by him and I felt like he was trying to isolate me from my friends, 
from my family. One time he literally threw and whipped an iPhone at my face. And then the second time he grabbed me off the couch and threw me to the ground. He does not know how to control his anger and he lashes out on people for no reason. Like if I didn't do exactly what he said, he would just get so mad. The times he was mean to me, it's just like he was so mean. He would even kick me out of the house every single time that he was upset at me. He would just kick me out, not even give me keys to come back. He was just like constantly trying to make him happy. He literally told me on more than one occasion that he thinks that it would be better for my dad to die because then I would actually start working harder. There is a lot to unpack in her two response videos. She throws out assault allegations, which I'm pretty sure have since proven to be valid because he just got out of jail last week. I just got out of jail right now. She also describes situations and shows accompanying texts that make it clear he was a very vindictive and controlling boyfriend. You're gonna go from everybody thinking you're dead to a month later, everybody not even knowing you exist. And while the blame should be partially shared between the two of them, because by being in these videos, she was clearly complicit in making them, I also understand how a controlling boyfriend could have coerced her into doing things in spite of her reservations. Like she was nervous. Well, I told her it didn't matter. Like at one point he tries to use this clip as proof of her willingness to help. Here's the video of her actually giving me her voice to use in that video. You just whisper it? So annoying. I'm not. You are. Can you whisper it? This is the last thing I have to do. I miss you. She was 100% down with these videos. But he's literally like harassing her in her sleep until she says her line. What did you think this would prove? Keep in mind, this is someone whose other ex also came out a few months ago and accused him of similar things, also showing texts that make him look crazy and violent, even showing a video of her phone that he broke while mad at her. And if all that wasn't enough, Jason the Station, who turns 30 years old today, actually, happy birthday, by the way, just a few years ago, flew all the way from Canada to Texas to spend the night with a 17-year-old fan. I made sure to stay up all night because I was paranoid. I, I wasn't sure what he was gonna do. I love all my female fans. Weirdly, this revelation is not totally surprising. Manipulative guys tend to target younger girls because they're easier to take advantage of. Yeah, he definitely knew what he was doing, but at that moment in time, I just didn't really think of it as anything. So I guess I was just really, really starstruck. Now, thankfully, this girl said that nothing happened between the two of them, so it isn't technically illegal that he did this. It's just sketchy. I don't know why you would do that. I don't know why a 27-year-old man would fly internationally to hang out with a teenager. I feel like he definitely would have done something the moment I turned 18 because, like, he's more flirt flirtatious in, in person than he is in his videos, for sure. So based on the consistency of his behavior and the sketch, of his actions, it's pretty hard to watch these videos by Alexia and not believe what she's saying. Obviously, quite a bit of this has to be taken at face value because there isn't always going to be concrete evidence for everything that's ever happened, but it definitely feels genuine. She's clearly very raw and emotional. And when you compare that to the fairly large body of her acting work on this website, I'll just say there's a pretty noticeable difference. The dark web mom was in when we ordered the dark web mom, we also saw a dark web dad. I'm just nervous that she's gonna be like crazy or something like the dark web brother. Even after all the dust had pretty much settled, Jay was still finding ways to make things worse for himself. He's been doing this incredible self-own where he gets really defensive about people accusing him of lying about this uh, the police report. So he sort of like brags about having been arrested. Jay committed assault on Alexia. Morano. This is, of course, contradictory to what he said in the past. I never hit a woman in my life. Warrant for arrest. I've never hit a girl in my life. Use a weapon, namely a cellular telephone. Okay, so maybe you didn't hit her, but you threw a phone at her and possibly your other ex-girlfriend as well. Is that supposed to be better? Cause that just kind of seems like a loophole to me. Anybody online, they're saying, they keep on saying, yo, Jay's lying. We called the police department, there's no warrant. So Jay's a liar. Bro. This is why you're not respected. But it's fascinating that he's more concerned with not being seen as a liar than he is about being arrested for battery. They're saying, I'm committing a crime by telling people I was in the army? Bro, get your facts straight. 
The only crime I did was assault. This is why you're not respected. What Jay has done here is indefensible. But as I was talking about earlier, with internet drama, you don't have to be perfect to win. You just have to seem comparatively less bad than the other person involved. Which is why he has continued to fire shots at Alexia, even after she has completely stopped talking about it. In one of his recent videos, he bought a new girlfriend off the dark web, as one does. But it's very obvious that this video is another not-so-subtle attempt at making Alexia out to be the worst person here. I mean, this character is clearly supposed to represent her, but in a way that's visually crazy. She has the coronavirus, I guess. She's holding a sludge hammer because that's what a man with a brain of a child thinks a crazy person would do. And the whole video is them recreating things from their relationship. Why do you want a YouTube channel? Because I want money. What? Yes, the insane person is definitely the one being parodied in this skit, not the one who wrote and produced the skit. What were you thinking? But even after all of this bullshit, profiting off of fake death, assault allegations from multiple women, even after this has escalated far past the point of insanity. The most frustrating thing is that none of it fucking matters. Nothing will happen to Jay Station. See, your first instinct is probably to disagree and say, well, no, his reputation is ruined. He's done for. But he's not. We say this every time he does something dumb, but then in two weeks, it goes away, and his channel continues to grow, it's never mattered. You look at all these dislikes, and your instinct is to be like, man, the only thing dead here is Jay Station's career. But at the end of the day, dislikes don't affect how much money you make from a video. The only number that matters in that regard is this one. And he's doing just fine there. I made like... Two million dollars off of YouTube so far. No matter what all of us big, strong, grown-ups with high school diplomas think, we are on a website where we're outnumbered probably 10 to 1 by tiny little kids swiping through dark web videos with one hand and using the other hand to steal their mom's credit card to buy V-Bucks. And they love this shit. They don't care what his ex-girlfriend says about him. They don't have the mental capacity to process his situation and be like, oh, I... I think I should stop watching this guy. It's not relevant to them. Who he is as a person doesn't change the type of content he makes. One thing that's sort of been lost in all of this is the second channel. You know, the one that Alexia died to promote? Well, he still has that channel. He still got a boost in subs, and he still plans on using that channel. And from my Dream Team channel, I'm gonna post non-scary videos to that channel. I'm not gonna let it die. We're gonna keep on going. Dream Team is getting to that one million mark. So in a way, it's almost perfect for him. He still has this place to post more videos with some extra new subs. But now he doesn't have to split the money with her. He gets everything he wanted. Made like two million dollars, bro. Multi-millionaire. And you know what? He will not learn from this. He will not change because he doesn't even think he did anything wrong. Why did I deserve this? Why did I deserve this? I don't deserve this. When he describes past relationships, it's as if the breakup was something that just happened to him, not something he could have done anything to cause. It really hurts me that a girl that I care about would do this to me and just let our fans down like this. But eventually she told me she no longer loves me and she broke up with me and my life spiraled out of control. This Draw My Life video is actually extremely insightful because he shows how often he feels as if he's the victim in life regardless of what he's done. The bank eventually came to my house and said, give me that house back right now. And they took my house from me, guys. They took the house. The freaking bank just came and took my house from me. Can you believe that, guys? They came and kicked me out and picked up my house and took it back to the bank. I owed so much money on the house because I was taking the money because I wanted to do YouTube that bad. All I did was stop paying for the house and then they took the house. I literally thought my life was over all from following my dreams. All I did was quit my job to do YouTube when I had 800 subscribers and it didn't work out. But that's not my fault. I feel like he definitely, like, when he was recording that, he, he made it seem really bad so everyone would feel bad for him. And when you look at the current situation he's going through, it's clear that this is something that's never stopped. I don't deserve this. He feels like he deserves to be forgiven because he's had a hard life. He's earned the right to make bad choices and it shouldn't affect his success. But whatever. You guys want to hear the root cause for everything Jason the Station has ever done on this website be described in his own words. Words. Listen to this shit. But about a week or two 
later, all of a sudden, my subscribers were at like 4,000 subscribers. And I was like, how did this happen? That's when I turned on the TV and I realized that the news was talking about me sneaking into the mall. And as soon as the news did their video about me, my video in the mall actually went to a million views. I was so happy. His first big break the one that essentially saved his life. I had literally hit rock bottom. Was because the news talked about him. He spends like 20 minutes of this video saying, this happened to me, and then this happened to me. All these bad things happened to me. Before he finally found a glimpse of hope, his YouTube channel was picking up traction for the first time ever because he committed a crime. Are you kidding me? The first thing he learned on this website was that if he created negative attention, if people talk shit about him, if the news covered him, it doesn't matter what they say it doesn't matter if he's going to jail as long as he's getting views and i kept on doing this over and over and over because the views were going one million one million one million one and i know I know I'm contributing to it too. I'm doing exactly the thing he wants me to do. So it doesn't matter what I say about him. He wins. He always wins. I'm smarter than hell, bro. I'm not going nowhere, dude. He's outsmarting everyone. And no one even realizes he's doing it because on the surface, he just looks so dumb. And you know what, guys? I finally realized what that makes him. He is... Jar Jar Binks, fumbling around a Star War, tripping over himself, but still successfully killing droids because they underestimate him. He's the fucking Jar Jar of YouTube. So yeah, Jason, you're laughing all the way to the bank, but don't forget who you are. A deeply flawed concoction thought up by George Lucas. Also, you've committed a bunch of crimes. Go away. Well, I have worked up quite an appetite after not leaving this chair for 12 days, and I know just what to do about it. Hi. Today I want to talk to you guys Ooh. about... Ooh. Oh, who's this guy? Get out of here, fart face! Whoa, whoa, guys! Guys, oh, wait, relax! Geez, that, this guy's way better! I'll take it from here. Yay! Do you guys like to eat? Yeah, we love it! So do I. Sometimes I'll even do it three times in one day. Oh, I do that too. But cooking dinner? I don't know the first thing about that. At least, I didn't until I got this box. What's inside? Yeah, tell us. It's food. All right. My wife and I have been getting HelloFresh delivered to our door almost every week for a couple of years now. We've gone through a bunch of great meals. It's fun to go on the app and pick which ones you want because there's 22 recipes to choose from every week. So if something doesn't catch our eye right away, we end up going with something else. And a lot of times it's something we've never tried before, which is cool. They've got vegetarian meals, low calorie meals. You can double the serving sizes if you're looking to feed the whole family. You can even throw in fun eggs extras like garlic bread or brownies, which you already know your boy did that. You already know your boy got brownies. HelloFresh is perfect for me because I love to eat, but I hate to leave the house. So I make them bring dinner to me. No more traversing the grocery store for 40 minutes trying to find the spice aisle so you can buy a big thing of coriander just to put a tiny little bit on one meat. Save time, save stress, and save money because meals start at just $5.66 per serving, making HelloFresh America's number one value meal kit. If you're worried about the environmental impact that packaging can have, don't worry because HelloFresh's carbon footprint is actually 25% lower than store-made grocery bought meals. They utilize almost entirely recyclable and or already recycled content. Now that's what I like to hear. And I like it too. Get the f out of here, dude. You suck. Now is a great time to get started with HelloFresh by taking advantage of their New Year's sale. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code I'm a little stinker 10 for 10 free meals, including free shipping. All right. Well, I smell something burning, so I'm going to toss it back over to that other guy. Thank you so much to HelloFresh for supporting my channel and also feeding my wife. Well, I hope you all enjoyed today's glimpse inside the mind of a very broken person. I know I did. I'll be back next time with something that hopefully doesn't take me two weeks to make. Uh, but until then... Goodbye. All these commentary channels, it doesn't bother me what they say at all. But what bothers me is that there's something wrong with me, man.